Hey there, it's Lara here, back with another weekly astrology video, um, fondly referred to as Witchy Wednesdays around here. And this one's for the week of May 6th to 12th, 2020. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, as always, I, I do appreciate it. How is everybody holding up out there? Um, you know, it's just the never-ending ride of ups and downs, right? Emotional ups and downs mostly. And we do have a pretty intense full moon approaching. And that may amplify the emotions. If you're somebody like me, um, I tend to reach the, the sort of... Uh, the energies of the full moon before the actual event. So it's the days leading up that I find the most intense. And then when the actual full moon happens, it's a bit of a relief often, but it's been an emotional week. Um, you know, what's new? It seems like what I say every week these days. I don't know about you. I hope that you are managing and hanging in there and um, finding something you know, even if it's the smallest thing, something positive in this whole situation. Um, and that is not to downplay how difficult it is. You know, it's difficult. I understand that um, full well. So, but, and sometimes the difficulties get the better of me, right? And so that's kind of, um, it's hard, it's trying. And especially when you're somebody who's, who's porous, right? And you, you, you're a feeler of all the feels and very sensitive. Um, then you, you, you're not only feeling all your own stuff, but you're just kind of absorbing everything that everybody else is going through, um, as well. And so that can be really tough. So personally, um, in order to, to manage, I have had to kind of take a step back a bit and just adopt this kind of attitude of, um, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. And so I just, it's, it's a sort of a one foot in front of the other kind of approach. And as I mentioned, um, I don't know if I said this in last week's video, but I sent an email out to my subscribers and I talked about, long story short, a piece of advice that I had heard a character give in a show that I was watching. And, um, you know, just to paraphrase, he basically said, when there's a lot going on, focus on what's in front of you, right? And so that's been kind of what I've been trying to do. Um, so I hope, you know, I hope that you've been finding ways to cope as well. But we are right now uh, sitting with the moon already in the sign of Scorpio as I'm recording this. And she will reach fullness at 6.45 a.m. Eastern time. So you can adjust for your time zone. And um, that will happen when she's at 17 degrees Scorpio. So uh, 6.45 a.m. May 7th, right? Um and this moon is going to be in conversation, in a in a nice supportive conversation with Neptune, who's in Pisces, so in a trine. And then we've got, of course, a full moon is always when the sun and the moon are opposite each other in the sky. So the sun is in Taurus right now, right? It's Taurus season. We're still in Taurus season. Um, so the sun will be opposite the moon in Scorpio. Sun will be in Taurus in close conversation with Mercury. So conjunct Mercury. And then Mercury, just like the moon is having a conversation with Neptune a, and a supportive conversation, Mercury is also having a supportive conversation with Neptune and um, a sextile in, a, in an exact sextile. So they're at the exact same degree. So we're going to break all this down and talk about, you know, what does this mean in the grand scheme of things for all of us? And of course, what does it mean for each of us individually, right? Um, but before I get there, there's something else I want to mention to you that is also happening this week, actually after the full moon in Scorpio, but I want to talk about this first and then circle back to the full moon. Um, so what is that? Saturn, Saturn's retrograding on Monday. Uh, so Monday, May 11th, Saturn, Saturn will station retrograde and, um, that's happening at one degree of Aquarius 
right where Saturn and Jupiter are going to meet up in December of this year, right? The great conjunction that we've been talking about. And so um, this is significant. Saturn will retrograde. I mean, Saturn retrogrades every year for between sort of four and five months, right? At a time. So the Saturn retrograde in itself is not necessarily unusual. It's just that this particular Saturn retrograde, again, it's happening in a really potent part of the sky, right? An important part of the sky, um, very relevant for these times, for what we've been going through for the last couple of years, um, you know, which is reaching this sort of culmination and, and tipping point, transition point, right? From Capricorn to Aquarius. And so um, it's, it's, it's a notable Saturn retrograde. And when Saturn retrogrades, it will be in retrograde until September 29th. So it's going to go all the way back to between 24 and 25 degrees of Capricorn, which is where a lot of stuff's been going on. Um, Saturn will join Pluto, who's already retrograde, right? So Pluto's retrograde already. Venus is stationing retrograde in Gemini. Um, on the 13th next week. I did speak about this a couple weeks ago because I wanted to sort of prepare you for it. So there's a video about that, I think, already a few weeks ago. Um, and then Jupiter is going to retrograde also next week on the 14th of May in Capricorn, just where Pluto is. And then Neptune in Pisces will retrograde in June. So a little bit further off. But we're kind of in this period where we're gradually kind of you know putting the brakes on in a sense and I I know some of you may be like what do you mean putting the brakes on like how much more can the brakes be on than they are right now right um but I don't really mean it like that uh, so it, it's more a retrograde energy take mercury because you know if you if you're a follower of astrology at all then you've probably, and even if you're not, you've probably heard of Mercury retrograde, right? That's the most popular one because Mercury stations retrograde three or four times a year. It happens regularly. Um, and, you know, we like to blame Mercury retrograde for all kinds of things, right? Um, and there's validity, validity to that, but it's much more than that. And there's a real opportunity for us when planets go retrograde. And that's what we really need to focus on. And so it's a turning inward of the energy, right? It's sort of a going into the into the self to get the answers, to 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 get the understanding and the wisdom and the answers. And it's a review of things and a reflection of things. And depending on the planet that's retrograding, that's sort of the subject matter that we are reviewing, reflecting on, you know, that's the quality of the retrograde. And so in terms of Saturn, you know, it is, it's a, it's a turning inward, it's a taking stock, um, and really a dealing with some unfinished business in a sense, because Saturn is the Lord of karma, right? And the Lord of time. And so to me, this kind of suggests this going back to the past. Saturn is associated with the um, the tried and true, the traditions, um, the rules, the boundaries, the regulations and the standards and the um, responsibilities, the mastery of things. You know, Saturn is all about doing the hard work and not taking the shortcuts. Um, and Saturn sort of dishes out the karma accordingly, meaning according to whether or not we've done the work or to what degree we've done the work and we've taken care of business, you know, in a responsible sort of, um, mature, <clears throat> excuse me, mature way. And so when Saturn retrogrades, we get to review, um, you know, how well we've been doing in that regard and what we need to shift 
shift and change and, you know, take note of. Um, and really, I kind of see this as a going back into the past to a, you know, maybe reconsider things that um, we've let go of or we've let slide or we've forgotten about or we've put down or, you know, um, that maybe we shouldn't have been so quick to do that. And maybe we need to go back and retrieve some things um, to bring forward with us, right? Because Saturn and Aquarius, it's like this going back into the past to, to inform the future and to help us with the future. So gathering some things from the past, you know, to, to, to bring forward to the future, but also uh, going back into the past to, to review like, okay, these are the things maybe I shouldn't have left here, or maybe I should, you know, consider bringing with me. And then these are the other things, you know, maybe the certain traditions and the old ways of doing things and thinking about things and um, the old structures and, and, and uh, rules and all of this that are not really going to serve us in the future. So maybe we need to let go of these things once and for all and leave them here. Right. And what does that look like? And so, and it's really interesting because I think a lot of us are sort of like there's this whole revival of things like, you know, homesteading um, and just going back and like getting back to basics very much. Right. Um, I mean, I made sourdough bread <laughs> for the first time ever. I jumped on that bandwagon. Right. But and we're planting a garden, you know, all of these kinds of things. And like going back to sort of more simpler times. Um, and being more self-sufficient and community minded and, you know, closing the gap in terms of the um, supply chain and bringing it closer to home and all of those things. Right. And just the skills like people are pulling out their sewing machines. Um, like it's just it's really interesting what's happening in a way. We're kind of going back and looking at maybe the stuff that our grandparents did that we kind of thought it was old school and now it's like hmm maybe there is something to that maybe we need to brush up on those skills and maybe they could serve us moving forward in new ways right in aquarius how do we innovate how do we bring this old information and these old skills and all of this into the future right and then at the same time looking at things like you know um the the government structures and just you know the ways that we've been doing things um let me think of an example like well okay so like work right like we're I think a lot of us are waking up to the fact that do we really need to be sitting in a cubicle eight hours a day um in order to be productive and do our jobs? Or is there a different way we could do that? Is that an outmoded way of doing things now, right? So that's just one example. You could think of many, many other examples, I'm sure. So um, that's that's kind of how I see this Saturn retrograde. And it's, it's like this um, scavenger hunt, right? Going Going back to like, okay, what can I take with me and what should I leave behind? in terms of sort of traditions and all of that, that I've just been talking about. So I wanted to mention that to you. Um, I will talk, I think in more detail about the other retrogrades in next week's video, but right now I want to get on to talking about the full moon in Scorpio. And I'm going to show you the chart before I go any further. So here, right, here's my old school, old school Saturn way of showing you the chart. Um, so here's the chart for the full moon, which is taking place, as I said, 6.35 a.m. May 7th, and that's Eastern time at 17 Scorpio. So here we have, um, let me orient myself here. Here's the moon in Scorpio at 17 degrees, right? And there is the sun in Taurus across the sky at 17 degrees. And right near the sun, within a few degrees of the sun, is Mercury. Uranus also in Taurus too, but a little farther away. And then there we have Neptune at 20 degrees Pisces, 
exactly in a sextile to Mercury at 20 degrees of Taurus and exactly in trine. Sorry, not exactly. Within a few degrees um, trine to, but but nevertheless, a trine to the moon, right? In Scorpio. The other thing I'll, so there's Pluto retrograde up at the top here. There's um, Jupiter, as I mentioned, is going to station retrograde as well in Capricorn. Uh, there's Saturn in Aquarius, ready to station as well soon on May 11th. And then also I'll just point out, here are the nodes, right? Last week we talked about the nodes of the moon changing signs from um, Capricorn and Cancer to Sagittarius and Gemini. So if you have not seen that video from last week yet, then you really um, should watch it because it's relevant for the next year and a half. And as I, you know, as I've said to you before, the nodes always move in reverse. So that's why this is at 29 degrees, 29 degrees, 29 degrees is my MC actually. And that's uh, 29 Gemini where it's, this is sitting for me. Um, so take note of where, where that is for you in your own chart, right? And you can do that by watching last week's video. So that's the chart. Um, so I already mentioned to you, you know, a sun and a full moon is always sun and moon opposite each other in the sky. This is about an opposition is about a need for balancing. And it's about um, this, this sort of tension, right? Between the, the more um, divine feminine yin receptive energies of the moon and the more yang um, divine masculine active energies of the sun. So those two things are kind of in this, um, they're like opposing each other right now, right? And, and it's a need to, to balance those things. Um, and, and to really, um, perhaps reconcile some differences there. Often, relationship sort of issues come up around the times of full moons. And that's because of the opposition. A conversation that's happening so it's it's a time when we can focus on bringing those two energies together right and balancing those two energies oftentimes at a full moon it's our our emotions right full moons are very associated the moon rules our emotions um with heightened emotions and just as the moon pulls on the tides she pulls on our emotions. And so our emotions tend to rise to the surface around the time of a full moon. And, um, you know, things that perhaps have been unacknowledged or shoved down there, not recognized, um, you know, things that have been brewing for a while tend to bubble up around the time of a full moon. And full moons are associated with these release points, culminations, things coming to fruition, um, things starting to bear fruit. Um, you know, turning points, per crises sometimes, um, you know, all of those themes are associated with full moons. And if you think back to, in terms of the cycle, th the new moon in Scorpio happened six months ago in, in October. So although, you know, this, th the full moon is associated with whatever began at the new moon a couple of weeks ago the new moon in Taurus, it's also connected to what began at the new moon in Scorpio six months ago, you know, in October. So if you think about that and sort of what story that is playing out for you. Um, Scorpio is a fixed water sign and it's, it's very intense, right? Um, I've talked about moon in Scorpio before. I'm a moon in Scorpio. So intimately connected to this energy familiar with it um it's about very like depth of emotion emotional stubbornness um you know scorpio is very penetrating and probing and questioning scorpio is ruled by pluto the lord of the underworld right about going deep going into the depths going in as i've used the joseph joseph campbell quote before the cave you fear to enter, which holds the treasure you seek. Um, that's Scorpio. And I think, you know, Pluto is retrograde right now, like I mentioned. And so 
in Capricorn, where we've been doing this work and there's this massive transformation going on, right? Scorpio, very associated with transformation. Pluto, very associated with transformation. So it's kind of emphasizing this digging deep, going into the depths, um, you know, the, the turnover of things, the breaking down of things uh, in order to, to rise again. And you know, we, we heal through these challenges, even though it's, it's difficult, but if we, if we allow that to happen, then, then it does. Um, and a questioning, I think too, you know, this full moon in Scorpio, like, what does this all mean? What's going on right now? What does this all mean anyway? So I have so much more to say here. Um, before I get to the signs but oh we have a little bit of time I just looked at the time here so um you know before before the camera runs out because that's what tends to happen so Scorpio is this well we we associate Scorpio with the symbol of the scorpion right and that is one of the symbols of Scorpio and really it kind of reflects the shadow side of Scorpio the, you know, protective and the, the, the sort of, um, lashing out if, if threatened, um, it's that sense of, of power born of fear almost. And that's kind of the shadow side of Scorpio and, and Scorpio, you know, can be quite obsessive and compulsive and, and, um, you know, it can be about power dynamics and, and all of that. But Scorpio is also associated with two other symbols. And I haven't talked about this in a while. Um, but Scorpio is associated with the eagle. So think of the eagle as, you know, flying up high above, getting that eagle eye view of things. So seeing the big picture and being able to really hone in on something, right? Um, Scorpio also has that capacity and the wisdom that comes from being able to see the big picture, um, and, and also focus on, you know, focus on the, the, the details as well. Um, and then lastly, Scorpio is associated with the Phoenix rising from the ashes. And like I always say, but the Phoenix needs to the phoenix burns up first, right? Um, so the, the phoenix burns up, turns into something unrecognizable, pile of dust, and then is born again. And so Scorpio is very much associated with this cycle of transformation, of transmutation, of alchemy, of, of death and rebirth. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean in a literal sense. So, you know, this is an intensely emotional full moon. Um, it's just an intense full moon in general. But the beautiful thing is, is that it is um, a moon that is very supported by Neptune, um, who is in a, a positive conversation with, with this moon and also with Mercury, as I mentioned. So Neptune's trying the full moon, right? Neptune is about compassion and empathy, um, and inspiration and connection to to spirit um to to the mystical to the unseen and it's really about this capacity to feel it all right all the spectrum of human emotions and my emotions your emotions all the emotions <laughs> in this big emotional soup and on the shadow side neptune's also associated with disillusion so not seeing clearly maybe seeing the world through rose-colored glasses, um, lack of boundaries, confusion, deception, martyrdom, right? Playing the martyr or playing the victim or escaping pain because Neptune rules Pisces. Um, you know, that capacity to feel all the feels, but sometimes that can just get so overwhelming um, and be very painful. And so there's this tendency to sometimes, um, you know, not be able to handle that and, and escape into addiction or, you know, uh, other, other things. So the glyph of Neptune, which I'll just quickly show you on the chart again, 
just just to kind of give you a visual. This is the symbol for Neptune, right? The glyph. So it looks like the trident of, of Poseidon. Um, and that represents the soul's desire to break free from the material realm, right? And so it's it's this, um, the crescent is receptivity, right? And then the cross on the bottom is the cross of matter. And so it's this desire to kind of break free from the material. And it makes sense when you think about it because Neptune rules Pisces, last sign of the zodiac, the end of the road sort of thing. Um, and, and symbolically, that's very much about the transition between this world and whatever lies beyond. So, but ultimately, Neptune is about mercy and it's about um, grace, divine grace, right? And so... And it's just like there's no sense in it sometimes. But if we have, you know, Neptune asks us to kind of have faith and to trust. And sometimes that's not easy. And then um, so Neptune's in this trine conversation with the with the moon. And a trine is an aspect of it's a conversation of ease and flow and support. Um, and it's really about acceptance and, and the natural organic unfolding of things, right? And it's about also with, with trines, it's like we may not see the blessings. It can be easy to miss because we're focused elsewhere or it's just so obvious that we can't see the forest for the trees sort of thing, right? And so I encourage you to kind of think about what that means in relation to the big picture of what we're all going through right now. Um, Neptune's there to support us ultimately. And then also Mercury opposing the moon, right? But, and right beside the sun, as I showed you on the chart, but in an exact sextile to Neptune too. And Mercury is the messenger. Mercury is the guide of souls, right? Who guided souls between the, the realms. Um, Mercury is this... Um, is the one who who dissects things and puts them back together. Um, it's about the exchange and sharing of information, the taking in and disseminating of information, and the processing of information. It's about all things communication, right? And our communication style. Um, and it's about mobility and, and coordination as well. Mercury rules those things. And so in a sextile, a sextile is another supportive conversation. Um, and so these two energies are working together, right? And they're, a sextile is more like um, where we have to have some, put some sort of conscious effort into it, but there is opportunity and potential, um, opportunity for growth. And so, and the, um, there's like this flow, this easy flowing sort of communication or collaboration that goes on between the two planets involved, in this case, Neptune and Mercury. But it's it's sort of like we need to bring our, our awareness to it, right? And so I encourage you to do that as well. Um, I'm going to go through the 12 signs. And speak to where the full moon is happening for each of us. But just before I do that, I have something I want to share with you. It's just a little piece in a book. It was interesting. I Just as I was getting ready to record the video, I kind of turned around um, to plug in the light behind me. And I, I, for whatever reason, I was prompted to grab this book off the shelf. And I had a bookmark in it. And I thought, oh, what did I mark in there? And I opened it up. And I thought... Hmm, perfect. It's a perfect message for this full moon in Scorpio. And so I want to share it with you before I dive into the 12 signs. And it's from this book called The Holy Wild, a heathen Bible for the untamed woman. You know, this this applies, though, to 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 anybody who's interested in this kind of thing. So um, and it's by Daniel Dulski. So 
who also wrote uh, Woman Most Wild. And she has a new book out as well, which I haven't read yet. But so I just want to read this piece where my bookmark was. And it, um, you know, in here she gives you some sort of like exercises and all of this, but the, the writing is just, it's, it's amazingly beautiful and powerful and very scorpionic to me very Plutonian, very Scorpionic. And so I thought it was really good to share this with you. So this is called um, Tracing the Feeling Mind, this little piece. And I just want to read you the very first paragraph. And if it tweaks your interest, you can um, have a look at the book yourself if you, if you want. So consider your entire life, my love, to be an epic myth consisting of an unknown number of chapters. You are the heroine or hero. And up until this very moment, you have lived the first 10 of these chapters. Title these 10 chapters accordingly now, writing in your journal as if you were both historian and prophet. You are living the end of the 10th chapter in this moment, but the latter chapters are yet to come. Doesn't it feel like we are living the end of the 10th chapter right now? Go back into the lived chapters now and make note of moments of bhava. I think you pronounce it like that, or feeling mind. That's what that means. These are moments when your spirit, mind, and body were all yoked together, vibrating with the universal frequency. These are moments not of great epiphany or ecstasy, but rather of feeling very much in the flow with life's design. In these moments, you were the truest version of yourself you could possibly be. And then she goes on. Um, so like, this gives me goosebumps reading this to you because I feel like it's just all of the pieces I was just talking to you about, including the Saturn retrograde, you know, Pluto retrograde, the full moon in conversation with Neptune, Neptune in conversation with Mercury. It's all neatly wrapped up in that little package right there that I just read to you. Um, so interesting, right? How that happens. And I've learned a lesson the past few weeks about trusting my intuition this is something this is a lesson I've been learning for my whole life um, and sometimes I'm better at it than others but I've realized that I'm not that that I I don't trust it as much as I should so I'm starting to practice doing that more and more and more um really practice doing it I mean I do practice it but it's like a, a switch has flipped for me and so when I was prompted to grab that off the shelf I just didn't question it and I did it and, and that's what came of it so here we go we're gonna go through all 12 signs and we're gonna speak to where the full moon is happening for you which house it's happening in um so let me say that anybody with planets points you know stuff happening around 17 degrees of scorpio or the um the other fixed signs so so which are taurus leo and aquarius will really feel this um but you know there's also this energy happening in pisces that's trining this um so i i feel like maybe the water signs also will have a um will really feel this maybe in a different way than than the fixed signs but obviously this is happening for all of us it's happening in a specific house for each of us and so that's what you want to know what house is this happening in for you because that speaks to the life themes that are being stirred up by this full moon and so when we do these general forecasts we go by rising sign first and foremost. So your rising sign or your ascendant, right? Um, or if you know your chart, if you actually know your chart, look at your chart because it's possible depending on the house system used that it could differ from what I'm about to tell you. Um, but in a general forecast, this is the best we can do, right? So listen for your rising sign, your sun sign and your moon sign. Um, this full moon happens to be exactly in conversation with um, my son, which is at 17 degrees of Pisces, right? 
and Neptune is sitting right around there. And so it's in trine as well with my, uh, with my sun. So interesting to see how that all plays out. So let's begin with Scorpio because Scorpio, this is your full moon, right? And it is happening in your first house. So on this axis of relationship, first and seventh house, because the, the sun will be in your seventh house. So the relationship between the self first house and the other, right? Seventh house. Um, but with a focus on the self and, you know, I, me, mine, who am I? The relationship to yourself is really what's being illuminated at the time of this full moon. And that includes your physical body. That includes your vitality. That includes how you approach your instinctual approach to the world and how the world perceives you um, these are the things that are being um, lit up for you at the time of this full moon so that's for you Scorpio I'm going to keep this brief here I'm moving on to Libra now the full moon is happening for you and your second house and opposite the eighth house right so this is this axis of um, physical form second house and transformation, right? Eighth house. It's about your resources, money, time, energy versus other people's resources. Um, and so it's in the second house, this is shining a light on things that have to do with your personal resources, as I mentioned. So your time, your money, your energy, um, your sense of sort of um, self-sustainability, right? How you provide for yourself. And also getting your, your basic needs met. Um, it's about what you value, what you truly value, and what you place worth on, um, including your own self-worth. And so these are things that are up for, um, you know, to be illuminated around this time of the full moon. So I'll leave it there and I'll move to Virgo now because I said a lot in the introduction. So definitely listen to the introduction. So Virgo, for you, this full moon is lighting up your third house, which has to do with your immediate environment and the people in it. Um, you know, your community, your neighbors, your siblings, your cousins, your, your um, like the people close to you, your teammates, you know, workmates, that kind of thing. And also very much about communication, right? Your style of communication, how you communicate, the messages exchanged back and forth, um, writing, teaching, learning on the, on the, and this, when we were talking about third house, it's about the basics versus the big picture or the higher learning, which is ninth house across the sky, right? Um, and so, and it's about what's close to home versus what's far away, the details versus the big picture. And so, for you, Virgo, you're focusing on this sort of um, what's close to home, in a sense, and you're you're focusing on the basics in terms of perhaps what you're learning, right? The foundational piece, or, or perhaps what you're teaching, as well. So that's for you, Virgo. Moving to Leo now, Leo, the full moon's lighting up your fourth house of home and family and place of living. Um, and your sense of emotional security, right? Which is fourth house is opposite the 10th house, which is about your public life. Fourth house is about your private life. And so this is what is um, being illuminated for you um, at, the, at the time of this full moon. Um, and so it's really important that you listen to the introduction to understand what that means, um, you know, and how that's all the, the planets are working together with the moon right now. So that's for you, Leo. Moving on to Cancer, your fifth house is what's being illuminated by the full moon in Scorpio, Cancer. Um, and so this is shining a light on things that have to do with children, um, your children, other people's children, you know, children you're associated with, um, children you teach, perhaps. It's about conception, you know, and reproduction, fertility. It's about your individual creative self-expression and creative projects. It's about what sparks joy for you. Um, you know, what brings you pleasure, that sort of thing. And that is uh, opposite you know, whereas the fifth house is more about the individual, the 11th house across the sky is more about the group and about 
collaboration and that sort of thing. But this is in the fifth house this is happening for you. So these are the issues that are being illuminated under the full moon in Scorpio for you. Um, so moving on to Gemini. Gemini, you've got the full moon illuminating your sixth house of your daily grind and, you know, health and wellness um, and how you are in service and also um, potentially speaking to pets. It's about the practical and bringing order to things, whereas the 12th house across the sky is more about disorder and chaos and about the the sort of spiritual, um, otherworldly things, whereas the 6th house is about the day-to-day, -day, right? The, the daily grind is, is the 6th house. And so um, that is what's being illuminated for you right now. And those issues, those habits and issues, you know, health and all of that. Um, so that's for you, Gemini. And I'm going to move to Taurus now where we have the full moon illuminating your seventh house of one-to-one -one relationships. So close personal relationships um, of all kinds being illuminated for you. And as opposed to first house of the self across the sky, right? Which is where the sun is sitting. And so um, the, the full moon is bringing to light relationship themes. Um, and also themes that have to do with contracts and obligations, that kind of thing. Contractual agreements is also seventh house. So that may be something that's coming to the forefront for you as well under the Scorpio full moon. So Taurus, that's you. We're going to move to Aries where we've got the full moon illuminating your eighth house of other people's resources, other people's time, money, energy. Um, and this has to do with also kind of deep psyche, like, you know, how we're vulnerable, those things that make us feel vulnerable and the healing that can happen through through that as well. But um, things like, you know, debt and taxes and insurance and wills and all of this can factor in here as well with the eighth house being um, highlighted. And it's about that transformational process. It's eighth house is where Scorpio is at home. So Scorpio themes that I spoke about in the intro are relevant here. Moving to Pisces, um, Pisces, you've got the ninth house being illuminated by this full moon in Scorpio. And this is where Neptune, right? Neptune's in your sign as well. And that's a big deal. If you listen to the intro, you can um, learn more about that. But the ninth house is about the bigger picture. It's about higher learning. It's about um, what we learn from people and places that are different from us. It's about our ideas and philosophies and belief systems in general, right? And so this is really what is being illuminated for you around the time of this full moon, Pisces. Um, those higher-minded things. Moving on to Aquarius, you've got the full moon lighting up your 10th house, right? So a very public house. It is the public Whereas the fourth house opposite it is the private life. This is about your material security. It's about your career, your worldly ambitions, the legacy you wish to leave. And so this, these themes are being illuminated by this full moon in Scorpio, um, who's in conversation, right, with Neptune as well, as I spoke about in the introduction. So that's for you, Aquarius. And then um, Capricorn, you've got the full moon illuminating your 11th house of the collective, of the group, of collaborations, of your hopes and dreams for the future and the people that can help you get there. And so for you, um, Capricorn, these are the themes being stirred up, being illuminated um, by the full moon in, in Scorpio. You've, you've got a lot, you know, Pluto's retrograding in your sign. Um, Jupiter's about to retrograde in your sign. Saturn's going to retrograde back into your sign, as I spoke about in the introduction. And so these are all relevant pieces. Um, listen to the intro, definitely. So, but, but full moon illuminating your 11th house. Um, and then last but not least, in this case, Sagittarius, where we've got the full moon illuminating your 12th house, right? The 12th house opposite the 6th house. Whereas the 6th house is about order the 12th house is about chaos it's about the unseen it's about the unconscious our dream world our connection to spirit our spiritual and mental health um it is about really our connection i don't know if i said this to the divine whatever that means to you and so and what goes on about you know behind sort of closed doors and uh, how we spend time in solitude and reflection and all of that can be about places that are tucked away from the world as well, right? Um, which I've spoken about before, like, 
um, spiritual retreat centers and hospitals and hospices and prisons and, and rehabilitation facilities and all of this kind of thing as well. But generally very much about the, the, um, the unseen. So that is what's going on for you Sagittarius. Listen to the intro for sure for the details. And that's all 12 signs. I hope this video brought you some insight uh, into what's transpiring for us and in, in terms of, uh, you know, the Saturn retrograde and the full moon and Scorpio specifically. And I'll be back to talk to you next week. Okay, so take good care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.